Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to Sweetwater Sound Check. This time out, the S1, the latest control surface from Avid. For complete information about the S1 and the entire family of Avid products, visit Sweetwater.com. Today we're checking out the S1, which is the latest Yukon compatible control surface from Avid. Being Yukon compatible means that the Avid S1 is supported by Pro Tools, by Media Composer, Cubase, Logic Pro, Digital Performer, and many other audio and video applications. The S1 allows you to take physical, hands-on control over what's happening inside your computer. And with Pro Tools, for example, you have extremely deep integration. Something like a thousand different parameters and functions are supported. Let's take a tour of the S1 and what it can do for you, and then we'll also look at some different configurations with additional peripherals. The S1 is an 8-channel controller, meaning that it has 8 channel strips on the front panel. Those channel strips consist of controls like the moving faders, touch-sensitive encoder knobs, we have a solo and a mute button. We have a select button on each channel strip, which attentions that strip, which means that it becomes the main strip that you're working on with the control surface. The record button record arms the corresponding tracks. When you hold shift and press that button, it moves you through the different automation modes. At the top of the channel strip, we have an OLED display, and this will give us feedback on what's happening with the controller, as well as what it's controlling inside your DAW. We assign what's happening in the OLED and what you're controlling using the buttons across the top. For example, the inserts, EQ, dynamics, aux sends, pan, and so on. We have a select button that corresponds with the rotary encoder and the OLED. And we also have an in button, which works with the inserts to bypass those, for example, and also has other functions. Rounding things out, we have two shift controls. The top one is what's called the surface shift control. And that changes the function of the buttons across the top. At the bottom, we have four modifier keys. The first of those is the second shift key. Then we have the control, the option, and command alt. So these correspond to the modifier keys on your computer keyboard. We also have four user assignable buttons here at the bottom, and those can be assigned to a wide variety of different tasks and functions. Working with the S1 is very simple. We use an app running in your computer called U-Control. And this is where you set up the controller, set up the workstation you're using this with. You can actually connect this to two different computers simultaneously and switch between them. We have general commands here that allow you to set up how the S1 is functioning, preferences. We can build layouts, which we'll look at a little bit later and also soft keys, which allow us user assignable control. Once you have your S1 set up, simply open your DAW, and the tracks that you've created, along with all the processing and everything else, will automatically show up here on the screens. And let's look at how that works. First of all, we can move through the tracks using the bank buttons, which jump us in groups of eight through the session. Back and forth, hitting shift and end takes us to the last track. Here it's my master fader and home takes us back to the first track. Here it's my kick. We can also nudge by one track at a time. There are various ways you can set up this behavior and back and forth communication between the S1 and your DAW. You do that using U-Control and also using your DAW. So you can control what windows open when you touch, for example, the pan control and so on. The other way we can navigate among tracks is using what are called layouts. And layouts are a way of just looking at a specific set of controls. We set those up inside the Yukon app. So I've created three here. My first layout is all, which shows us all the tracks. The second one just shows me my guitar, as well as the associated effects track that goes with it. And my third layout takes me just to my drum tracks. Now we can navigate among those using the Yukon app, which isn't very convenient. So you can do it from the surface as well by holding the shift command and hitting the buttons here at the bottom. This allows you to instantly navigate to a set of tracks, even within a very large session. We can also open and close the mixer window. A useful function is being able to flip whatever parameter is being controlled by the rotary encoders down to the faders, which allows you to move them much more easily. You do that by hitting the flip button. In this case, the rotary encoders are assigned to pan, so we're panning our tracks back and forth. When we hit flip, pan is now on our fader. We hit flip again, and the faders are now controlling the channel level. We can access plugins as well as many other features inside your DAW using the next set of controls. When we hit inserts, it calls up the different inserts inside your session, and we navigate among those using the page controls. So in Pro Tools, for example, we start with insert A. Now I don't have anything in insert A on any of these channels, so there's nothing showing up. When I hit the page control, we jump to the second insert, and you can see I have my EQs inserted here. We can access those EQs by simply hitting 
one of the rotary encoders. At this point, all of the EQ controls for the kick channel are arrayed across the encoders. So we have high frequency, we have the high frequency gain, and so on. To access the additional parameters, we hit page, which scrolls us over to more of the parameters inside the plugin. And we can scroll back. When we hit back, we go back to our inserts. If we move to the next set of inserts, which is insert C, we've got a delay here on the guitar track, and we can access its parameters. If we bank over, I've got a reverb on the verb track. And again, we can access its parameters. Hit back, and we're back to our inserts. Moving down to the next insert, I have dynamics inserted here. Bank back, and again, we can open those up for the particular channel we select by just hitting the rotary encoder. And remember, whatever parameter we have selected, we can flip down to the faders. If we have compatible EQ and Dynamics plugins inserted, we can access those directly using the EQ and Dynamics buttons. So in this case, if I hit EQ, it'll jump to the EQ plugin for the selected track, which in this case is the kick drum. If we move to the snare drum, we'll jump to the parameters for it, and so on. If we hit the Dynamics button, we'll jump to the associated Dynamics plugin for the selected track, in this case, snare drum. We can control the aux ends in a similar way. Hit the aux button, and now we step through the different aux ends using the page controls. So I don't have anything assigned on send A. If we move to send B, I've got bus five and six assigned here, which is feeding my overall reverb. I can adjust that here and bank over to the rest of my tracks and adjust that as well. If we bank to the next send, I've only got that on my electric guitar, it looks like, so I can adjust that here. Using the surface shift key, we can access this top row of functions. So we can set up our input routing here, virtual instruments here, Heat if you're using Pro Tools, Groups, Mix, and so on. If you're working with VCAs, a very useful function of the S1 is VCA Spill. This allows you to just display the VCA as well as the tracks that it's controlling. So in this case, I've got a VCA set up to take control over my drum tracks. To just work with that, I can double click the Select button. Now my VCA jumps over here, and I've got control, but we're just looking at the drums, so it's very clear what's happening. There's so much more functionality in the S1, we've really just scratched the surface. For example, there's a foot switch jack on the back that can be used for punch in, punch out, or to access talk back. And that's just one of many, many more features. But let's take a look at what happens when we start expanding this system. So I've added an iPad Pro to the S1. It just slides into the slot at the top. I'm running an app called Avid Control. Now Avid Control communicates with Pro Tools and with Yukon so that you can take charge over a lot of different parameters again. The combination of the two is very powerful. For example, something as simple as transport control is available right here on the front panel. Now when things are running, you can see we have meters, we can access EQs, dynamics, panning, and so on, solo, mute. All those functions are available right here. We can also look at a tracks view, which gives us an overview of what's happening with the session, with the channel view. We can access a wide variety of different parameters that are specific to a particular channel. We have a meters view that allows us to see large meters, as well as access EQ, dynamics, and pan. The soft keys window allows us to access a ton of different things, and you can assign all of these. But for example, we can jump to layouts, and this is where we can access all tracks. Remember my guitar layout here, where I had the guitar and its associated delay, or just my drum tracks, and we can jump back to all. Very quick way to navigate among your session. If you have a compatible monitoring device, you can control that from within Avid Control as well. So the combination of the two gives you complete control over everything that's happening inside your session without really having to work too much with the computer. And this is great to allow you to really get into a creative space when you're mixing. But we can expand the system even further. You can actually connect up to four S1s as well as a Pro Tools dock in the same system. When you're using multiple S1s, they're magnetic, so they'll snap together so they function as one unit, or you can actually bolt them together using the included plate. So let's add a dock and another iPad and see what that gives us. When we add a dock to our system and an associated iPad, we can really take charge of what's happening. So the dock gives us control over many, many different functions right here on the control surface. And then we still have all that control from the Avid Control app as well. When we have two iPads, what happens is this becomes the master iPad running Avid Control and giving us all the functionality we saw earlier. The second iPad switches into what's called meter mode and simply displays levels, but also gives you basic access to panning, to EQ, and dynamics. So if we run our session, 
we have metering here, and the nice thing with the iPad Pro is that it basically lines up with the channel strips, so it all works very easily. And then over here, we have all that functionality that we were talking about earlier. And when we go into channel mode, we now have soft knobs for controlling the different functions. As your system grows, it's still very easy to set up and configure. What I've done is add a wireless router to the system. So my three hardware pieces, the computer, the S1, and the dock, are connected by Cat5 or Ethernet cables to the network. I've also set up a wireless network, and the two iPads are communicating via that. All of this is controlled via the Yukon app. You can see we have the S1, and here's the iPad that's sitting on top of that running the meter mode control app. We've got the dock, and then we have the master iPad that's also running Avid Control. As I mentioned, you can expand the system up to four S1s for 32 faders, as well as the dock for the additional controls. And then you can add four iPads to the S1s, or you could use Android devices. And then you have the master iPad that runs on the dock itself. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Avid's new S1 control surface. It's really a lot of fun to work with. It allows you to really take your mind away from the computer and get over here just into the mixing space. So you get hands-on, you're not staring at the computer screen, you've got meters in front of you, you can access all of your plugins, all of your inserts and everything right here. We have control from the dock. It's a great system and a great way to work. Thanks for joining me for Sweetwater Soundcheck. I'm Mitch Gallagher.